So we talk about Jesus and light and darkness today, and as we look at it, we understand, and we need to hold on to the reality, and really there's one thing I want you to grab onto and remember. You have no light of your own to shine. Remember the moon. It reflects the sun. It has no light of its own, but if you went out a couple weeks ago when it was like a full moon out there and it was a clear sky and it was so cold and it shined over the snow and even the snow was reflecting the light coming off the moon, that's a double reflection, right? This beautiful reflected light, but the moon has no light of its own. And the same goes for us as Christians. You don't have to have a false light, a fluorescent spirituality that does no good. You can live in the light of God and you can reflect his light or you can be a bad imitation of it on your own. I invite you, church, to lean into the understanding and the idea that when Jesus talks about the the light, about, about your light shining, he's talking about reflecting himself through you about you being the light because of what you're receiving from him. You are reflecting his light. It's not yours. It's his shining off you. So I invite you, I've said it before, go out into this world. Get moon-faced, right? Get, get a nice big reflection of the Son of God coming off your light. And let your light shine so that those who live in darkness will, as I said, I think in Isaiah 9, see a great light. A great light will come through your life. What up, Foundry Kids? Um, Real quick question for you before we go into our kids' questions. When you were, well, you are little, um, but as you sing, you know the song, This Little Light of Mine, I'm Gonna Let It Shine, you know that one? Um, when you have to uh, do the light, the, you know how it's like hide it under a bushel? No. I have been judged by people I love dearly. I don't want to say their names, Josh, Bella, and Ethan. But, um, and Erica, don't you? Yeah, Erica. Because they believe that when I did this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine in the hide it under a bushel. No. They were like, your thumb's not your light. It's always your pointer finger is the light, right? So I I need some help from you. Let me know which one is it. Is it thumb or is it pointer that's your light in the song? And parents, you sang it too. Help me out. Defend me a little. I'm alone in this one because my thumb was always my light. And I didn't hide it under a bushel. I let it shine. All right, kids, here's your first question. Have you ever had to walk somewhere in the dark where you couldn't see? When Jesus lives in our hearts, he shines his light in us. Do you think it's important that we share the light with others, just like sharing a flashlight with a friend who's afraid when you're maybe walking out at Camp Geneva? Light doesn't just show us the way. It also exposes or lights up what's been hidden in the dark. Do you think people have things hidden in darkness, in the darkness of their hearts, and that sometimes God has to shine a light on it so he can take it away so that they'll confess it? I hope you guys have a great time at groups, um, and whatever you got next, have a great time, and don't forget, let your little light shine. It's a thumb, not a pointer right? Yes, it is. All right. Have a great day, kids. So uh, do, let me ask you this. Have you ever been in a place where it is pitch black, no stars, no moon, no street lights? What is the darkest, the physical darkest place you've ever been, not spiritually or emotionally, but the darkest physical environment you've ever been in? Can you think of a time where you put your light under a bowl, where you literally tried to hide your relationship with Jesus?
What things contribute to healthy eyes in regards to what is said in verse 34? Question four, is it easy to misunderstand what is truly light, which is God, and what is truly counterfeit or false light? Have you ever experienced the jar or the shock of something in your heart coming under being exposed by the light of God and it's just jarring and shocking to find out what was there. Have you ever experienced that? Does the light of God shine in your life or are there areas you purposefully keep dark? In the flame to the night. Something there and something white. It is a big screen that's black and white. Check out our brand new screen. It will help you see a better view of me. Okay, you ready? So here's our question for the week that you had sent in. Uh, it was a statement, then a question. I tried to find a list, a list of our elders on the website. Who are our elders? It's a good question. Um, so here's the reality. We are a church that we are currently in the RCA. We have a different governing structure only because we are, we are not officially organized in the RCA. We have an oversight team that functions as our governing board of elders and deacons. So we do have a church board. There are people from outside the church who are on the board from the classes and um, from a different church and then some members from within this church who are our elders and um, governing board. And they operate in that office. Uh, but we also have some... Uh, some different understandings of how we, um, well, there's a traditional idea of the duties of elders and and they're different than what we do on our oversight. It has been a different process and we as a church are governed by our board of, uh, by our oversight board and we also have empowered some other people who are our sacramental elders and we'll have somebody talk about that but before we do, I would like you to know that there are, um, there is a church board and uh, I, could, I could go through and list them off right now if I think about it. It's me, there is, um, Tom Grable is on it, and he was a pastor at First Reformed, but there's more about him coming later. Then there's um, Christopher Calamine. There is Mike Shermer, who has been a part of it. Uh, Jacob Bonima was on it, but he just rotated off. Don Vinsingle, Jody Daru, Jeremy Visser from the Classis. Am I missing anyone, Tom? I feel Allison. like I am. Allison. No, Allison rotated off. Okay. Because she's on staff now. So nobody Tom. else that yet. All right. So that currently is our is our board, and uh, if you have any questions about that, let me know. We're excited to um, introduce them in this way. If you want to know more about them, know who they are, have a conversation. You may uh, gladly reach out to us info at foundrychurch.net, and we will get you in contact with them. And you could uh, you can have your questions answered by the board, and yeah, engage with them. I think you can. Yeah, I'm in charge. Yeah, you can. Okay, that's it. Uh, I would also like to introduce something that is completely not alive, but it's going to be awesome. This, I mean, Kyle, walk with me. Walk with me. From, from here, like all the way over to here, it's our new screen for Foundry Venues. So when you see church, there's going to be a gigantic, not as though I weren't big enough after the holidays, but a gigantic like center screen teaching. There's me. I'll be a lot taller. Apparently the camera 
doesn't make me any better shape, but that's all right. Um, but I'll be a lot bigger, and you, it's a better engagement for the church. It's our new screen, new projector, four video venues, so you get a great picture and a great engagement um, from that teaching, so it's really cool. But there's another introduction I would like to make, and we're going to do it with a little bit of pizzazz. So hang on a second. Yeah, I said pizzazz. i got to move some stuff. Coming out of Granville, Michigan, weighing in at a solid 195, red-haired, full of the love of the Lord Jesus Christ, and ready to serve you at the Foundry Church as the ministry director and venue pastor to the Steel Rooster, Mr. Thomas Something Grable. All right, apparently I wasn't supposed to run off the stage clapping, but I got caught in the moment. That was, that was rad. I love that. That was a good introduction. I, are you 195? Um, yes, probably, roughly, maybe less. Maybe oh, more. maybe less? I don't know, somewhere oh. around there. Really? I'm so fat. Oh, <laughs> my okay. gosh, I'm it's so okay. much more than 195. All right, that was a good introduction. Though. I was, that might have been the best intro ever. Did you feel like ready to fight? I was worried about uh, being from Granville. I'm really from Wyoming, but oh. that's okay. <laughs> Out of Wyoming, Michigan, okay. I'm never uh, ready to fight. <laughs> nice, I'm never ready I'm to a fight. peacemaker. <laughs> All right, I would like to welcome Tom the Peacemaker Grable to uh, introduce himself, let you know a little bit about who he is, his family, his ministry background, his role here, and then he's actually going to share with you how we um, engage with what we call sacramental elders. So, Tom, it's been a pleasure. We've been friends for a long time, and I'm so glad we're doing ministry together. Uh, check it out. Listen to Tom. He's going to tell you about a bunch of stuff. Are you ready? Light I'm shadow. ready. Sweet. Uh, yes, I will forgive him for calling me 195 pounds, but... We'll get to that later. I am Tom Grable, and I have been in Zealand for 31 years, been in ministry for that entire time. I'm married to Michelle, and together we have three children. They are all grown out of the house at different levels of education, and I'm excited to be here at Foundry Church. My role title is Ministries Director. My top three areas are focused on pastoral care, um, discipleship and ministry alignment along the different venues that are starting up. I myself have taken on a role with the Steel Rooster venue. I've been developing that from the ground up and we're going to be launching on the 10th of March. I want to say a little bit about sacramental elders and what their role is. The sacraments, we have two of them. There's communion and baptism, and the role of the elder is to oversee both of those sacraments, make sure they're done decently and in good order, and to also serve as uh, help in those, to pass out the elements, to administer the baptism and provide the um, environment for it, watch over, make sure that uh, it is all handled in good order. And so we, we take those sacraments seriously and we look for elders who also will take those seriously and um, make sure that the full benefit and meaning is accomplished through those. A little bit about our sacramental elders here at Foundry Church. One quick question. Do you have the eye of the tiger? I have two eyes of the tiger and um, they're working pretty good with the assistance of my glasses. Nice. Thank you. Have a great week. Thanks for being a part of groups. And remember, let his light shine through you. Sing a song. <laughs>